All right, I think this is good. Hello everybody, so I'm not home at the moment, but I still wanted to do a video on this. So I was, I was listening to a video by Kyle Kalinske and he had mentioned in 2018 the fact that there were, there were Afghani warlords and still are Afghani warlords who are also pedophiles who chained children to beds as sex slaves. And I realized that there's probably not a lot of people who knew this, even though it was back in 2018. So here I am talking about it. Sources in the description box below. I have my notes on my phone, so bear with me. So in 2010 to 2016, under the Obama administration, there was 5,753 occasions where the U.S. military asked to review Afghan military units to see if there were any instances of gross human rights abuses. If this were to be the case, by law, the U.S. military, by U.S. law, the U.S. military has to stop their funding to these individuals. Moving forward, the Obama administration tried to keep these types of cases confidential. These reports that found out that, yes, there were, in fact, U.S.-backed warlords in Afghanistan, because apparently they're better than the Taliban, that we're working with them and the Obama administration tried to keep those documents confidential until 2042. Think about that for a second. Why would he try to keep those confidential unless you know that you're doing something wrong and you are aware that this is a problem? Now, these kids, they're called Bacha boys or Baka boys, I apologize. I'm not familiar with the the specific lingo. But this isn't just occurrences of just like these random warlords. These are people who are even running for president. For example, in 2014, there was a CIA-backed presidential candidate. His name was Gol Alga uh, Shirzai. Shirzai, I think that's how you say it. I apologize again if I butchered the name here. Now, he was widely accused of being being associated with these pedophile trafficking rings and yet he was backed by the CIA. Now soldiers specifically were told not to report this and were discharged when they did. And not just any soldiers. For example, there was an individual, he was former Special Forces Officer Captain Dan Quinn. He was relieved of his command after he found out that there was an Afghan militia commander who were keeping boys chained to his bed as sex slaves. Now, Captain Quinn whooped the guy's ass. And for that reason, he was relieved of his command. Moving forward, there was Sergeant First Class Charles Martland, who was a Green Beret. Now he found out that the police commander that he was working with had abducted and raped a boy and then beat the mom after she tried to save him. So, Sergeant First Class Charles Martlin decided to beat his ass as well. What happened as a result? He was dishonorably discharged. Now eventually that got reversed. You have to wonder why the U.S. government feels so strongly to try and defend these types of individuals. I mean, this is like literally the guy who, who is in charge of the police force in this region. There's another person, his name is Lance Corporal Gregory Buckley Jr. Now he had to work on post with a person who is an Afghani commander. He found out that this guy was as well involved in child trafficking. He reported the guy. After he reported the guy, he was killed along with two other Marines. Apparently, the kid who was a sex slave was the one who killed him. More than likely, it was the person himself who had killed him. And yet this just got swept under the rug. Because apparently working with these guys is a little bit better than working with the Taliban. Interestingly enough, there is a, a organization, a part of the US government called SIGAR, or C I think it's SIGAR, it's S-I-G-A-R. They ran an investigation on this. Yet they didn't include any of these people's testimonies. They didn't include anybody who decided to be on record talking about this. <laughs> what they did instead is they took, I believe it was three 
unnamed person testimonies, which if you're in the court of law, that is clearly going to degrade that particular position, which is unbelievable when you really think about it. So why, why would they do that instead of taking the testimonies of the people who are on record? And also the testimonies that were, that were supposed to be anonymous, those people were just claiming they're generally aware. They didn't have specific examples, just like the couple that I mentioned. Now you might be thinking, well, maybe they didn't know that these people knew something. Well, no, actually it turns out that there were dozens and dozens of US soldiers and on top of that, Afghani soldiers that were reporting this to even journalists. And this organization decided not to include any of that, any of the people that were going on record. In 2016, Seagar, however you say it, they were investigating 75 cases, which even the State Department claimed that, yeah, that's not even, that's, that's not even a fraction, apparently. Keep in mind, there was 5,763 occurrences that were being looked into by the, by the Afghanis, but yet Seagar is only looking into 75 cases. that really makes you have to wonder what are we doing there and what is our goal? And why is it that there are government officials who are trying to hide a sex scene? I don't have an answer.